Ruby Ibarra, you have been on my list of uh, people that I want to interview and feature here on the show, and I'm so happy that it's it's finally happening. Thank you so much for making time for us. Of course, I'm very honored to be here, and I'm, I'm glad we made it happen. First, uh, we just uh, finished an interview with Ramona S. Diaz, filmmaker of uh, A Thousand Cuts, and I know that you did uh, an original, a powerful song for that uh, Filipino-American uh, documentary. If I fall, I stand up, break these walls, I rise up Even when I lose it all, I always got my eyes up A thousand cuts will be enough to keep my fists in these cuffs So it was definitely such an honor to even be part of such an incredible film um, I actually got the first chance to meet both Ramona and Maria in Manila um, back in the spring of 2019 So me and my band uh, took a trip to the Philippines to do uh, about five days worth of shows and um, interviews and on our last day, this was actually the morning of our flight back to San Francisco. Um, we had a scheduled performance and interview at the Rappler offices. And in walks um, both Ramona Diaz and Maria Ressa. And I just see them from the corner of my eye. And I remember we're in the middle of recording um, the performance still. So I, I wasn't able to turn my head or, or make any, any sort of commotion. But I remember just being completely starstruck and um, just unable to believe that I was in the same space as them because I had been following a lot of, um, you know, Maria's stories and what was going on with Rappler at the time. And um, definitely also seeing, um, you know, how Rappler had been vocal um, about what had been happening in the Philippines um, in terms of, you know, the politics. Um, and so, you know, to have such this a prominent figure, um, you know, being in the, in the same office as us at the same time and not knowing that she was going to be there. Um, naturally, me and my band um, spoke with both Ramona and Maria after our performance. And we got a chance to kind of um, get into a conversation and get to know them a little bit more. And I remember her last question to us was asking, um, like, why do you do what you do? And um, it sounds like a very simple question, but it actually made us all think as as, especially as Filipino American artists being in the Philippines at that time. And, you know, I, I brought that back with me and then to, to the States when we returned and fast forward, maybe nine months later, I think it was the week before uh, New Year's Eve, um, I get an email from Ramona Diaz and she, she tells me, um, hey, you remember when we both met in Manila and we were filming for Maria Ressa's documentary? We'd love for you to do the closing credits music for, for the film. And I was just so, so surprised, um, again, just elated to, to that she even remembered who I was. And so as we started talking about um, what the film was about, she gave me a, a, an early glimpse of um, some of the scenes. Um, you know, thinking about what kind of lyrics to write for such a powerful film like A Thousand Cuts, it definitely was a challenge at first. Um, I knew that this is going to be a very important piece of film, um, not just in the Philippines, but as we all have seen, you know, there's a lot of parallels between the Philippines, um, between the administrations. And so I knew that I had to obviously, you know, give it my best in terms of, you know, the storytelling that I was going to write, but also um, give it justice, knowing that, you know, this, this song is ultimately also not only going to represent the film, but also going to represent Maria Ressa. And um, I think when I was writing the lyrics, it was just me focusing on what Maria Ressa stands for. Um, what, what, what does it mean to, to have a sense of truth and sense of understanding and also a sense of knowing what to fight for and what you believe in. And those are all different elements that I tried to display and portray in, in the music. Right, so how long did it take you to write the music? Um, we actually were only given about four days to, to write the lyrics, to record the music, to produce the, the music as well. And we, they needed the, um, the final track within four days. So I think it was on New Year's Day, it ended up being on January 1st, we mailed them the song, the final version, and it was, it was a race for them to, to get to Sundance Film Festival because that was where they premiered it, um, January 2020. So they were on a real limited uh, time crunch and, and so I had to deliver. Right, and that's what's amazing about you, Ruby. I've been such a fan just watching you from all the, through all this. First of all, your talent, it, it's, um, you can't deny it, it's there, you have it. 
But then also you're using that talent to be vocal. Just the courage of you being out there speaking about social issues and as well as uplifting fellow Filipinos, as well as uplifting your culture. Where do you get the motivation and the drive to do all that? Um, I think it's a, it's a mix of two, two separate things that, that's happened in my life. I think one primarily being um, the reason why I even got into hip hop, uh, the very first artist that I was introduced to um, when it came to rappers was Francis Magalona. And as we both know, um, you know, his, his music has al had always been, um, or had always included sociopolitical lyrics, um, you know, from songs like Mga Kababayan, where it, it, it um, was singing and rapping about having a sense of pride of being Filipino and celebrating being Morena and Moreno, Kayumangi. And um, so listening to that as a young child, I think kind of planted the seed um, in my head where when I became an adult and I became my own artist and, and my own, um, you know, poet and um, knowing what kind of lane I wanted to be in, um, I think it just kind of came full circle and I wanted to kind of produce um, the same type of empowering music that Francis Magalona provided for me as a young kid trying to understand who I was. Um, you know, I, I migrated, uh, me and my family both migrated um, to the U.S. from Tacloban City, Philippines. And so I remember when um, I, we first got to America, for the first time, everyone around me um, didn't look Filipino. People looked different than, than I was. And I think it was kind of um, uh, just being kind of immersed in, into such um, a new diaspora, into a new culture where I'm like, who am I? How do, how, do I, how do I belong? How do I fit in this new space? And so listening to Francis Magalona's music, I think as a young kid, um, still allowed me to continue having that connection to the homeland. And um, in addition to growing up with to Francis M's music, I think just being in the Bay Area, um, I think the Bay Area is known for being a historical place in this country where, um, you know, it's served for decades of um, activism, um, whether we're thinking about San Francisco or even Berkeley, you know, where we have the Black Panthers. Um, I think it's a mixture of the kind of music I was listening to and where I was living that made me feel and made me kind of cognizant of the importance of talking about, you know, political and social issues in, in, my, in my music and my art. And here you are. I call you the Pinay Warrior. <laughs> In the oh, same wow. way, I call Ramona the Pinay Warrior because here she is as well doing the filmmaking and all that. And it's, it's just really nice that you guys were able to collaborate. But going back to you as, as, as this warrior, you know, you're fighting COVID, not just with your words, not just with your art, but also in the lab. So in the lab and in the studio, you're this fighter. I, I mean, how do you balance both roles? And what's more difficult? fighting it with words or fighting it in the lab or fighting it in the studio? That's a really good question. Um, first, how do I balance all of these roles? I think it truly comes down to time management. Um, you know, people ask me all the time, how do I still have a full-time job while being an artist? Um, especially, you know, pre-COVID, um, pre-pandemic times where, um, you know, throughout the week, I would still be working 40 hours a week, but also performing, um, I would take a flight down to Los Angeles or go to another state just for the evening and then come back just so I could make it, I can clock in and make it to work on time. Um, but I think it's probably, I think the immigrant mentality in me, um, you know, being not only a person of color, but also being a first or a 1.5 generation Filipino American. I think, you know, if you have kind of that background um, and that experience, um, I think, you know, folks like that aren't strangers to wearing multiple hats. Um, and so when it comes to me kind of feeling like, do I have to choose between sciences or do I have to pursue music? I'm actually in a time right now where I love doing both. And especially this last year, it's given me a new perspective, I think on the work that um, we do at my company and in, in the lab and just a better understanding too of, um, you know, this isn't just a nine to five job, but um, this is, um, something that can help benefit the community, I, I'm, I'm hoping. And um, I think, especially with how this last year has gone, it really is gonna take a lot of all, all hands on deck in order for us to um, get out of this. Right, something that can help the humanity, not just, you know, communities, but 
all of us. And that's why um, I started earlier. I wasn't recording, but when I greeted you, I just, just said thank you because I know that it can't be easy. I said, Mama, we gonna make it there someday. Here you are doing your art and doing your spoken word and speaking up about social issues. And it, it's just quite amazing because you're not also stopping there. You're also doing many other things outside of those two roles. Um, you have mix uh, appearances, you have projects with mix, uh, collective hustle. Can you talk to us about that? I had a, a conversation, by the way, uh, recently with Romeo, collective hustle, and he spoke very highly about you as does everyone else in the Filipino American community. But go ahead and you know, tell us uh, your connection to those outlets. First, I certainly want to say um, thank you so much to Mix and Collective Hustle. They've provided me with so many opportunities just in the last year alone. Um, I think that, you know, Mix just in general is such a great platform um, for, especially for Filipino American artists. Um, there really isn't anything um, remotely close for, in my perspective, um, to what Mix provides, um, especially for independent artists such as myself, where, um, you know, we're, obviously limited in resources sometimes and allowing us to push our music and our art out there. And I think mix helps bridge that gap between the bigger stages and um, the, the more local and independent artists such as myself. And um, I've been very blessed to have done uh, a handful of um, events with mix and collective hustle. For instance, I did a How keynote speech and performance um, for uh, collective hustles event in Canada um, two years ago. Um, last year, uh, right before the quarantine started here in California, um, I was also I also performed at uh, Filipino Roots Night um, hosted by Collective Hustle. Um, so I got to open up uh, for the Sacramento Kings um, basketball game, which was very cool. Um, and also getting to perform um, in multiple places, not just you know within the Bay Area, but um, they've given me the opportunity to perform in Canada, for instance, where I collaborated with Inigo Pascual and we performed, I think it was 100,000 people that came out that day um, overall to, 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 see the, to, to see their night market. And um, you know, I think it's, a, it's been a mix of being able to meet a lot of incredible new people, being able to network with um, other artists and being able to experience and go to places that I, I never thought I would. So Mix and Collective Hustle are definitely doing a great job in um, allowing artists a bigger platform, and more opportunities. And I think also putting Filip the Filipino face on, on a more global stage. And I think ultimately, um, that's definitely the biggest goal of the day is to make sure that we continue continue to push our narratives and our stories forward and to the point where, you know, it's it's commonplace for us to see a Filipino American on television or to hear a Filipino American on radio. And I think we're getting there. So here you are in your late twenties, but already uh, is accomplished as an artist and um, as an influencer. Your influence spans um, continents, um, and and you get people to listen to you. And but then at the same time, you're right. I mean, a lot of artists who have reached the status that you are reaching right now would just say bye bye to their day job right, and focus on this, but you're balancing both, and you've mentioned it's because you see the value in what you're doing as well as a scientist. So bottom line, borrowing from Maria Ressa's uh, question, why do you do what you do? It just feels th like this is what I am supposed to do. Um, you know, I, I grappled with that question, um, you know, so many times asking it to myself personally, even asking it to my close friends and my family. And I think at the end of the day, when when most people are asked that question, it's you feel like it's your calling. Um, you feel like it's your passion. And I think that's ultimately what drives me to, um, whether it's me being a scientist or me being a spoken word artist or a rapper, I just feel that fuel and that fire within me to, to want to pursue that and to continue doing that. And on top of that, I can see the value of it too in helping my community, um, you know, whether it's through music or the sciences. I think those are two of the world's biggest medicines, um, you know, especially for Filipino people who, who love music and we love the arts, we love entertainment. Um, and, and especially in a time like this where there's just 
so much um, trauma, um, so so much negativity in the world. I think that you know arts will always be valuable. And when I think about my career also as a scientist, what also drives me is knowing that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, this last year I, I keep mentioning, but you know. It, I know, I know for a lot of people, especially my close friends, a lot of them have kind of um, dwindled in, in their po positive outlook. But, um, you know, when I think about my career and, and the work that I do and um, the people that we work with and the outcome of the, the things that we do, um, it gives me that sense of hope. And I think ultimately um, what I love about my journey so far is that um, it gives me a sense of hope and hopefully I'm also um, giving people a sense of hope. That's what you are, definitely hope and inspiration. Uh, we're actually putting in our segment called So Inspiring because you are inspiring, not just in what you say, but in what you do and how you act, how you present yourself. What's on the horizon for you? Are you working on collaborations, projects, shows, and, and different things? So as I mentioned earlier, Janelle, um, when my band and I myself traveled to the Philippines in 2019, we actually recorded um, that entire trip. So we ended up creating a docu-film um, called 7,000 Miles Homecoming, which I co-directed with my good friend named Evelyn Obamos. And we premiered it um, last October here in San Francisco. Um, we did a uh, drive-in uh, theater style of, of the, the premiere, and we actually co-premiered it with um, Leia Salonga's concert film which to me was also amazing. And, um, you know, from there, we definitely want to make sure that more people, more eyes get to, to watch this film because I think um, outside of it just being a, a music documentary, we also explore things like Filipino identity, specifically Filipino American identity. Um, and what does it mean to be a Balik Bayan? Um, what responsibilities come with being a Filipino American that's away from home? And how do we continue to nourish and to build that bridge, you know, with our Kababayans back home in the Philippines? So these are all topics that we explore in the docu-film. And I'm definitely very excited to um, continue promoting this film and hopefully, um, um, if if things are, are, are still closed and we can't go the, the film festival, the indie film festival route, that um, we're definitely hoping to bring this to universities and showcasing it and speaking with students about it. Um, and in, in addition to that, I'm also continuing to work on my sophomore album, which I'm planning to definitely release this year. I am so excited for you now adding director to your list of um, hyphens, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Ruby, for taking the time to talk to us. Good luck with everything. God bless. If, if there's anything that we can do for you as well, so make sure um, you, uh, I'll give you my number later after this, so make sure you um, don't hesitate to call. Anyway, for now, thank you. And um, if people want to catch you, I know social media, website, go ahead, invite them. Thank you to everyone who's been supportive of me so far. Um, if you want to continue with me on my journey, uh, I have a lot of new music coming out, a lot of new projects that I'm working on. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, at Ruby Yabara, that's R-U-B-Y-I-B-A-R-R-A. -R -R -A. I'm also on Kumu, streaming weekly. That is awesome. Thank you and more power to you. Thank you, Janelle.